We at the CPR Worldwide Media Network, your constitutional patriot radio station, would like to take a moment to reach out to a portion of our listening audience, to the NSA, the mainstream media, to liberals masquerading as conservatives who would like to see us off the air, and to those who are spinning their wheels trying to take us down. We have a special message just for you. At the CPR Worldwide Media Network, we're happy to be your 24-7, 365 obsession because while you have your little panty in a wad, we're speaking truth to power, telling real conservatives what you don't want them to hear, the truth, and we're not going to stop. Now then, back under your collective bridges with the rest of your fellow trolls, and oh yes, thanks for listening to CPR. This is a station identification moment. You're listening to CPR Worldwide Media, a division of CPR Media Network. Coming to you live right across the planet. Check out our website at www.cprworldwidemedia.com and our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash cprworldwidemedia. This is CPR Media Network, coming to you live from the USA. Well, looky here, a new listener. Hey, this ain't your little sister's radio station. Why do cities shine so bright? It's the glow of opportunities, of ideas bouncing off one another, of countless people, every one of us, striving to succeed. Right now, in cities everywhere, ideas are being born. New thinking that will put us in awe of what people are capable of. That's what lights cities up. And helping people and their ideas to burn even brighter. So that communities, businesses, and you and I can grow. What if a bank made that its job? For more than 200 years, City's job has been to help empower people and business. Now, around the world, it's wherever people gather, wherever ideas come alive, it's wherever you are. The world's city. about how many miles you can get out of the C-Max hybrid. It's about how much life you can fit into it. The Ford C-Max hybrid with an EPA estimated range of 540 miles on a tank of gas and all the room you need to enjoy the trip. Go stretch out. Go further. However dark the night, however dim our hopes, the light is always there within you. His family gave him hope. You fight harder than those other guys, and you win. His spirit gave him strength. We're gonna die out here. We're not dying! And in his darkest hour... Who is the Olympic athlete? His faith <clears throat> would not be broken. Hello, mother and father. This will be the first time in two years that you'll have heard my voice. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Your loving son, Louis. On Christmas Day, experience the unbelievable true story of one man's journey home. You can take it. You can make it. Just gotta believe you can. If I can take it, I can make it. Unbroken. Rated PG-13. Christmas Day. The moment you connect, you're no longer in control. What does this guy want? No claim, no statement. We're facing a nuclear meltdown. This is only the beginning. Black Hat, rated R. Read something recently worth thinking about. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who's given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, who's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier who serves under the flag who defends the protesters' right to burn the flag. Isn't it time now to demonstrate that we support our troops? Were it not for the brave, there'd be no land of the free. Fred Thompson's message was brought to you by CitizensUnited.org. Good evening, folks. This is the State Legislators' Roundtable. I am Charles Kaperwitz, Executive Director <coughs> for Citizen Initiatives, and the Countermand Amendment. Roundtable discussions with state legislators and community leaders 
center around critical issues in the states as they relate to federal encroachment on state rights and how the nonpartisan Count Amendment can remedy many of them safely and quickly. This is not a gotcha forum. We're not here to back our guests into a corner. We encourage serious discussions of issues important to our guests and their states. Subjects can include <coughs> taxation, criminal law, energy policies, health care, social issues, federal land grabs, court decisions, education, executive orders, unfunded liabilities, EPA, BLM, IRS, and even more. You will learn how to protect your enumerated rights in the Constitution and how the states and their citizens can identify, define, and protect their unenumerated rights in the Ninth and Tenth Amendments peacefully and permanently. The roundtable members tonight are Sandy Toad, she is our Executive Coordinator and Georgia State Director, Mike Coons, our National Director <coughs> and Alaska State Director, and Kelly Gordon, National Coordinator and Texas State Director and our producer. We now have 15 sponsored states for the nonpartisan Article 5 Count Amend Amendment. We would like to add more in this legislative session and get closer to the magic number of 34 so that perhaps by the first part of the 2016 a legislative session, we will have the applications filed and, and approved. We have had the honor of meeting many of the country's leading legislators on the State Legislators Roundtable. I see these state legislators more at legislators, more as statesmen than politicians. They are trying to find solutions to the many problems their citizens face, especially as they relate to federal encroachment on their state's rights. We have been growing. Our audience now is well over 100,000 every week, and we expect to get to maybe 150 to 200,000 shortly. For those of you in the audience who would like to learn more about the Count Amend Amendment and the work that we are doing, go to countamands.us. That's countamands with an S, dot US. Also, ask your friends and relatives to tune in tonight and to hear uh, discussions that we will have with two distinguished uh, gentlemen from North Dakota. Go ask them to go to cprworldwidemedia.com forward slash live dash radio. Those of you in the audience that would like to call in, you can do so at 956-217-0031. Now, we tonight have two very special guests from the state of North Dakota. Uh, one is Representative Chuck Damption, and uh, I've only known Chuck for probably just a couple months at, <coughs> at most. And I have found him to be a very delightful man, a very gentle man, and yet at the same time a very sincere and honest man because of the way he has handled himself with me. At the same time, he has also distinguished himself with many activities in North Dakota. He is on the Energy and National Resources uh, Committee. He is the Vice Chairman, and he's also on the Human Services Committee. Our second guest is Senator Oli Larson. He is a return guest. He's been on the show before. And Senator uh, Ole Lawson has been doing a wonderful job in the Senate in not only helping us advance the Count Amend Amendment, but also in serving his state. Now, I would like to ask both of you uh, to just feel free to share what's on your mind, things that are important to you and to your state, and areas that uh, would, are affected by federal encroachment would be the focus of where we're going. So you have the floor, you can talk as you wish, and Representative Adamption, why don't you start by sharing some thoughts that you have. Okay, well thank you Charles. I appreciate you giving us some time on your program tonight. I guess uh, I could say a lot of things about of, that are of concern just the direction our country is going, but I'll stick to things that deal with what I feel are federal encroachments on us. And uh, one of the things that started years back, early on in the early 60s, and I, I've been acutely aware of this being a farmer for all my life, uh, was federal wetland easements. And these easements were taken in perpetuity, so we're 
and they were I, I think you could safely say that they were obtained in many cases under fraudulent circumstances as misrepresentation when they were purchased and obtained and uh, you know we were, in a, we were in a time when people still and it's kind of sad to say this people still trusted the government and I don't know that that's the case anymore but uh, I, yes I believe you're right uh, yeah a lot of these, these easements were sold and uh, you know a few years later the wetlands that were not under easement were developed and they were some of the most productive farmland on these farms but the ones that were <coughs> purchased or placed under easement are non-productive just wasteland really but they're what part of how much of what, what percentage of, of North Dakota are under that type of easement uh, uh, restriction? Oh, I, you know, I couldn't give you an accurate percentage, but the, the Fish and Wildlife Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, considers the whole Red River Valley, which is a, some of the richest farmland in the world in eastern North Dakota, to be a converted wetland. So we have some real concerns with the definition of waters of the United States so that's being discussed, discussed and, and debated right now in the Clean Water Act and those types of... And another thing that that's... I don't know if people are aware, but when in, in our country, not just North Dakota, but in the United States, when a road is built through a wetland, there's a mitigation process that probably goes anywhere from one to one to four to one. And I would, I don't have this in, in fact anywhere, but I know just judging from what figures I've heard in our state alone, I would venture to say that this is costing our country billions of dollars a year just for road improvement or road reconstruction. I understand. Now we're talking about what might be four or five hundred dollar an acre land being purchased by the Department of Transportation for maybe fifteen thousand an acre for mitigation purposes. Wow. So this that's that's an old you know, that's the first problem that I became aware of. And of hmm. course we've dealt with federal government as farmer, I've dealt with the federal government in, in farm programs and so forth, and I can say, honestly say, it's much nicer to have a good, healthy market price on the free market than it is to have to depend on the government payment. Understood, and, and which you may never really get back from the government anyway. Uh, <laughs> the, the cost could often be far more hidden cost than actual cost up front. Uh, that's a good introduction, though, uh, Representative Damshin, and I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, these are the kind of issues that we in Citizen Initiatives have been working uh, to address and trying to find solutions because the biggest concern that we have is, as citizens now is to preserve our constitutional republic. And uh, the Article 5 uh, provision that we have in the Constitution allows us to do things that can't be done just through uh, acts uh, in your state legislature or in the other state legislatures. And so uh, the Town Amendment Amendment is the vehicle that we see that really can solve some of these big problems and push the government back. But uh, Senator Lawson, did you have a few things you'd like to share about some issues that you're dealing with up there in North Dakota? Well, sure. Uh, thanks again, uh, Charles, for putting us on here and having this form. I, I just uh, survived the re-election campaign, so I feel good about that. I need to have a shout-out to my constituents to continue having that trust in me. Amen. And, That's good. <laughs> yeah. Our, uh, you know, one of the biggest recent things is uh, this Affordable Care Act, and I, I have a hard time even saying that. I should just revert it to CARE Act or something like that, <laughs> Obamacare. <laughs> 
but uh, just recently we had legislation on the floor that I, uh, I uh, put forth to have these navigators that are federal navigators that, that have jurisdiction over North Dakota uh, selling these products, these policies to uh, citizens of North Dakota without being licensed agents, without knowing the policies, and it's just another federal overreach. That whole program uh, is just something that I feel that states together can band together and say, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, just another bill today uh, that came forth is that uh, there is uh, a parallel policy or insurance that our state developed for uh, individuals that could purchase before the Affordable Care Act that really met the needs of the people. And it was our, it was what we as a state knew best to do for our citizens. And that system is no longer, really it doesn't have legs to continue. If, if the federal government's marketplace, if you will, or whatever mechanism that they want to insure people and force us into this socialized medicine, uh, we don't have a leg to stand on with it. And that's one of the biggest issues that that got me uh, here in the Senate is this health care debacle that we're living through. Uh, I, uh, I would like to add to that, but I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure what to say because everything about the Obamacare uh, statute is unconstitutional and unhealthy for the citizens in the states. I don't know what it is about free market principles that the left doesn't like. Why they can't figure out that people can uh, do better for themselves than the government. And they can do it if they're just left alone and prevented, uh, and not prevented from uh, developing new businesses, new uh, enterprises, <coughs> new research, new uh, medical facilities. I mean, we, we used to have the best health care system in the world up until six years ago, well, actually four years ago, when it was finally turned into Obamacare. <coughs> and all of a sudden now, we're wondering what kind of a health care system we have. Sandy, why don't you throw two cents in here? Tell us about some of the problems you're having down there in Georgia with some of the medical people that you're dealing with. Well, get me started on Obamacare. My goodness, you know, I, I happen to have an acquaintance that has a medical supply business, you know, wheelchairs and all that, and Obamacare made such big changes to the way they do business, she almost wound up going out of business when it came in. One example is the way they dealt with like the power wheelchairs. Now, power wheelchairs, you know, run about $4,000. They're pretty expensive. Well, before with Medicare, Medicare would cover 80% of it, and the patient would pay the other 20, and the wheelchair would be theirs. Well, with Obamacare, and I wondered why they did this, they put it on a rental basis so, so that medical supply place had to go supply the wheelchair and Alexa explained to me she had to pay for it in like 60 or 90 days but she could only get rental payments like $80 a month from the patient and a certain amount each month from Medicare on this rental basis and it made it so difficult for her to survive that she was thinking about closing down because she had to have so much more money tied up for long periods of time. And I thought about it <clears throat> and I wondered why they would do such a thing when the old system had worked for years. And what I suspect is that if somebody died and they didn't keep up the payments, then Medicare got the wheelchair back. So they now had the wheelchair they could sell again. Is you know, the only possible reason for it. And then with all the extra taxes on medical supplies and devices, 
she's had more of a problem where they've had to cut back on certain things in the wheelchair and it's made the people suffer the patients <coughs> for example they will not cover a wheelchair with a lift seat for somebody that needs to be able to reach up when they're in a wheelchair for shopping or cooking they Medicare did away with those they wouldn't pay for them anymore where they used to before so there were all kinds of Horrible changes that just made everything rough for the patient and for her and her business. And she's managed to keep it going, but she keeps saying, can you get rid of Obamacare? She keeps talking to me about it because she cannot stand it. Senator Lawson, would you like to add to that? Well, yeah, you know, the horror stories just continue to keep going on, and then we hear these, we hear these socialists say, oh, but this person who never had health care ever, and their, their needs are being met, and everything is hunky-dory, you know, they just don't understand that for one person that gets health, there's 500 that are damaged from it, you know, from the, the lack of getting services, the cost that's out of pocket, the the deductibles it's just it's a nightmare and I just that is to me is the one of the many things that the federal government does not need to be in our business with yeah good points very good points and the, and the actual uh, uh, number of people who are adversely affected uh, <coughs> are literally not only unknown to us because they won't report that but at the same time we know that they are in great numbers compared to those that benefit, and, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, I mean, a wonderful point, not a wonderful program. Uh, now, I wanted to ask Mike uh, to come in here and tell us a little about the ANWR uh, theft that recently took place with the Obama administration up there in Alaska, and then br we'll bring that back to Senator Damshin's uh, state and have him talk about some of these issues with regard to land grants as well. Go ahead, Mike. Yes, the uh, few, uh, it's been a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, uh, President Obama, by executive fiat, executive order, executive memorandum, however you want to call it, stole uh, uh, offshore from Bristol Bay, Alaska, all that, all that uh, area and locked it up so we can't do any uh, oil exploration ever. Uh, then that wasn't bad enough. He, could, he just couldn't stop there. So Sunday he came out uh, and said that he is demanding that Congress um, utilize the Wilderness Act that goes back to LBJ to lock up an, as a wilderness all that land up at Anwar, which is on the coastal plain, which is where all the oil is, billions upon billions of barrels, trillions upon trillions of cubic feet of natural gas. Um, and then he turned around and according to Fox News, which I didn't know until this afternoon, I quote, for Alaska, Obama issued a memorandum Tuesday placing 9.8 million acres of the state's offshore resources off limits indefinitely. The memorandum withdraws from leasing parts of the Buford and Chukchi Seas, as well as a shallow 30 mile shelf in northwestern Alaska called Hannah Shoal, citing their importance to native Ala Alaskan natives and the sensitive environmental resources. Shell uh, was up there last year trying to get a, a uh, exploratory rig in. They ran into some uh, problems with their rig. They were going back last year. Uh, that real big question now is Shell going to go back up there because that's exactly what he's talking about. Uh, this is all Alaska land in Alaska waters. Uh, this isn't uh, outside the 200 mile or outside the five mile limit or whatever the other limit is. This is all Alaska. And 
This is in violation of Article 1, Section uh, 8, Paragraph 17. It's in violation of Article 4, Section 3, Paragraph 2. Um, but he doesn't care. Uh, the, the, he is honestly, I believe, is out to shut down any and all oil exploration in the entire United States so that uh, that he can that he can feed his environmental where I call eco wackos um, and keep them going with uh, unproven windmills and uh, everything else that they're talking about matter of fact there was just an article where the people in uh, Nantucket are all upset because they're gonna spend a billion dollars on windmills that don't even they're gonna cost way more to even operate and the electricity they're going to get off of it so this is just continue and right now the state of Alaska the legislature uh, uh, our new governor uh, Walker who had had a meeting last week with Sally Jewell the Department of Interior uh, who told him nothing about what was coming down uh, he is furious our legislators in DC are, are fit to be tied and uh, this is this is this is probably one of the last straws that we're going to take, and we need the counterman amendment to not only because the governor wants a full toolbox, and I called the governor's office up today and I said, you get the counterman amendment in your toolbox, you can repeal everything that Obama has just pulled all the way back to Jimmy Carter and, and beyond. Mike, uh, what what you have just described. And I think that Representative Benson will have some comment to make. But what you just described is uh, an extreme uh, form of the kind of problem that we've been watching uh, creep into our lives, depriving the American people of their independence and liberties and states' rights through the state legislatures. And now it's growing to the point where these guys, they think that they can control every aspect of our lives through regulatory agencies. Uh, in the state of Nevada, uh, it has been reported that, I heard 88, but someone then corrected me and said 82. 82 percent of the land in Nevada is controlled in one way or another and owned by the United States federal government. That's nuts. What, what use is the state of Nevada to the people if they only have 18 percent of it? The point that I'm making, this has got to stop. And the only way to make it stop is through peacefully and, and quickly is through the counterman amendment. Uh, Representative Damshin, feel free to comment as you'd like on anything that we've talked about so far. Well, I can certainly relate to the, the feelings of, of the restrictions up in Alaska. Of course, you've heard reports, I'm sure, on the Keystone Pipeline that we've struggled to try to get permission to, to, to go forward with here, which probably isn't a real big issue now with the oil, oil industry slowing down quite a bit in the state. But I think one of the most concerning things that I can think of recently is the regulations that have come out for coal-fired power plants. We have a number of them in North Dakota. We also we, we also have some wind farms, and, and we're not opposed to wind if it can be self-supporting and uh, let it develop. You know, give it give it a chance. But uh, we also know that as it is right now, it's at best supplemental power. And uh, our coal-fired plants are very efficient and very clean. There was hair tested as early as probably six or eight months ago, Western North Dakota, where a number of these plants are operating, was found to have the cleanest air in the country, cleaner than the air over in Eastern North Dakota, in fact, which was not a problem, but was still out there where the coal mines and the oil while gas flaring was going on, was still cleaner. But the restrictions that have been placed on CO2 emissions on these coal plants are on there's no technology existing today that can meet the standards that are required and it will put our coal fired power plants out of business and, and not only that it'll, it'll put hundreds of thousands of workers 
out of business. Kentucky, West Virginia, uh, you know, your state, North Dakota, there are many other states. There are 38 energy producing states and probably close to 20 of them are producing coal in one way or another. So uh, this has got to stop. I mean, what we have done is we've allowed these ideologues, I call them Marxists. I mean, what they're trying to do is to gain their advantage in a way uh, through uh, class divisions. And by doing that, they're, they're creating such false issues and then making a point that they need to be addressed and solved through regulatory rulings and executive orders that unless we challenge them and get them to realize that that not only are they propagating falsehoods but they then are providing solutions that are not realistic I have nothing against wind power I really have nothing against solar I have nothing against all of the ways in which magnetic energy and so forth uh, but I don't want millions of American workers to lose good paying jobs in the oil and gas industry for an example the average wage the average wage is eighty three thousand dollars a year that's incredible compared to the way uh, the earnings that most people are making today and here they're putting these guys out of business and they're taking North Dakota and make, trying to make an example in North Dakota by restricting your ability to use your land properly uh, and then making false issues to make new regulations there is a new process that or procedure that is being uh, advanced by did I Charles yeah are we at break time now yes sir hold that thought we have got a great conversation going on and we are going to use the countermand and address a lot of the issues that all of our states are facing today with the federal land grabs and Obamacare uh, Charles Kaperwitz has figured out the strategy the safe way to convene the Article 5 Countermand Amendment Convention. So Check out our website at www.cprworldwidemedia.com and our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash cprworldwidemedia. I believe that every single one of us has what it takes to win back-to-back -back gold with ski faster than any other human. I believe it's possible to overcome fear. I believe. I believe. I believe it's possible to destroy stereotypes. To start over. To be the toughest. The strongest. The bravest in the world. And when we work together, we can make it all possible. That's why City has donated $500,000 to its Every Step of the Way program. An initiative created to help future athletes reach their full potential through sport programs that inspire us. Like figure skating in Harlem. Like youth enrichment services. Like Team for Tomorrow. The Team USA Stay on the Slopes initiative. Now spread the word and help decide how much of that money goes toward offering personal support and financial assistance to Olympians in need. Promoting the growth of hockey in the U.S. Expanding the sport of luge into new regions. Support for wounded service members. Join Team City and let's turn a world of potential into reality. Go to city.com slash every step and help decide where the money goes. The design of the Ford Escape is clearly intended to grab your eye. Oh, and your foot. Huh, ain't that a kick. The Ford Escape with the foot activated lift gate. Go open up something interesting. Go further. However dark the night, however dim our hopes, the light is always there within you. His family gave him hope. You fight harder than those other guys, and you win. His spirit gave him strength. We're gonna die out here. We're not dying! And in his darkest hour... Who is the Olympic athlete? His faith <clears throat> would not be broken. Hello, mother and father. This will be the first time in two years that you'll have heard my voice. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Your loving son, Louis. On Christmas Day, experience the unbelievable true story of one man's journey home. You can take it. You can make it. Just gotta believe you can. Rated PG-13, Christmas Day. The moment you connect, you're no longer in control. What does this guy want? No claim, no statement. We're facing a nuclear meltdown. 
This is only the beginning. Black Hat. Rated R. Read something recently worth thinking about. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who's given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, who's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier who serves under the flag, who defends the protesters' right to burn the flag. Isn't it time now to demonstrate that we support our troops? Were it not for the brave, there'd be no land of the free. Fred Thompson's message was brought to you by CitizensUnited.org. Mr. President, members of Congress, you've been making a lot of noise about taking our guns away. But you might want to review history. 1835, Gonzales, Texas Territory. The authorities wanted to confiscate the big gun that protected that colony. You know what the people said? Come and take it because they were willing to fight for their freedom and their guns. So are we. Come and take it if you want it. Come and take it if you think you can. Come and take it, but I warn you, you'll have to buy it from my cold dead hands. We want the freedom that God gave us, so you best not cross that line. If you want this gun, you gotta come through us and take it. One shot at a time. Just like Gonzalez, we're keeping our guns. Welcome back, folks. Thank you for staying with us. This is Charles Kaplowitz. I am the Executive Director for Citizen Initiatives and the Countermand Amendment. I'd like you to invite friends and relatives and associates to listen to our program. We have a wonderful uh, uh, conversation tonight going on with two distinguished gentlemen from North Dakota. Uh, Representative Chuck Damshin and also Senator Oli Larson. Send them to CPRWorldWideMedia.com forward slash live dash radio. Also, you can go to countermands.us and learn more about the work that we're doing. There's a one, there's a very uh, effective vi vi video or satisfactory, I guess is the word I'm looking for, video that is called the Counterman Amendment video. Look at that. It's 32 minutes long. It'll tell you the story of why the Counterman Amendment is America's solution right now. Now, uh, before we get back to our uh, special guest here tonight, I going in the second hour. I'm going to be talking about the Second Amendment. Hold on for a minute, and we will be uh, discussing how the federal government has been intruding on our constitutional rights. But before I go back to the discussion we were having just a moment ago, I want to bring this simple truth to you. The World Health Organization reported recently uh, that there are 90, if I have this correct, someone is in the background coughing, if they could mute their phone, that would be good. I have problems coughing because I have a problem with, uh, with uh, a bronchitis right now. At any rate, uh, the World Health Organization had the latest statistics from uh, 90, some 92, I think, countries. And uh, the question was, how many murders do they have per 100,000? The United States, the, the highest was Honduras, 91.6 murders per 100,000. They're not allowed to have guns. The least was the United States. <coughs> we have four, well, next to the least. We have 4.2 uh, murders per 100,000, and we are allowed to have guns. And then the clincher is Switzerland requires its citizens to have weapons, and then to go through special training programs in order to use them safely. They literally have no murders per 100,000. So it jumps from 91.6 per 100,000 in Honduras. Venezuela has 41.1 keeps going down to Dominican Republic 22.1 and so forth till finally it reaches America where we have 4.2 murders. Now my point is simply this, guns don't kill, people do. And as a matter of fact when you have the legal possession of a gun uh, the crime rate drops, the murder rate especially. We'll talk more about that in the second hour. 
Now, Senator Damshin, why don't you go right ahead and uh, continue with your, your thoughts. I know I cut you off because of the break. Well, <coughs> excuse me, that, that's fine. I just, I was, I was sharing our concern about coal and, you know, we do, we have an 800 year supply of coal at the rate we're generating power right now. And the industry is all set up, it's been set up for, well, for many years, for 50, 50 years at least. And uh, it's, it's very efficient there, they're finding They've been finding new technology, that developing new technology that to dry dry out the coal before they burn it, and, and uh, they've they've built these scrubber stacks. And you know, it's just a shame to think that, that industry has to go down. And not only the industry, but the people of the United States, <coughs> when this when coal power shuts down. We're going to see at least double in our cost of electricity. And not only that, that, not only that, Representative Demption, but we're actually surrendering, giving up, abdicating our position of uh, authority and uh, energy production through coal uh, to nations like China. And as a result, they're the ones that are producing it with dirty coal because they don't have the technology that we have already in the plants uh, in in America I want to read uh, I want to read to uh, the audience two sections in this countermand amendment why is this so important the countermand amendment is actually designed to make certain that we do not surrender abdicate sovereign authority in state legislatures under article 5 that's the purpose I firmly believe that we will not be able to restore our constitutional republic and remedy the various problems, some of which we have discussed here tonight, without the legislatures in their proper role under Article 5, and in the case of the counterman, making sure that the government doesn't go forward with some of its plans for the purpose of stealing states' rights and depriving our liberties or denying them. Here are the two sections. The article restores state sovereignty in our constitutional republic by providing state legislatures countermand authority. Second, section 2. The legislatures in the several states shall have the authority to countermand and rescind any congressional statute, judicial decision, executive order, treaty, government agency's regulatory ruling, or any other government or non-government mandate, including excessive spending and credit, imposed on them when in the opinion of 60% of state legislatures, the law or ruling adversely affects their state's interest. When the counterman threshold has been reached, the law or ruling shall be immediately and automatically nullified and repealed. This counterman authority shall also apply to existing laws and rulings. Now, the 60% rule that we have included in this uh, section that is 60% of the states have to countermand before a law can be rescinded. The reason for that is so that we don't put the federal government out of business. That was the biggest issue, one of the biggest issues at the Constitutional Convention, how to strike a balance between states' rights, who created the federal government, and to give the uh, federal government the capacity to function effectively to protect the states in a variety of areas without allowing them to have overreach, which is what has happened today. So the 60% rule is essential in order to strike that balance. It will force the federal government to see the states as partners in government. And it will also create an interest on both parties to find reasonable solutions. When the federal government or the EPA or the BLM or any other regulatory, even the IRS, when they decide that they're going to make a ruling that they want to impose on all the people in the country, they will keep in mind that it will only take 30 states to rescind that ruling or that law. And they will do, they will write those laws in a way that are amenable to the states rather than forcing them down the throats of the states. That's why the 60% rule is so important. The other consideration is the countermand amendment will address some of the most essential issues of our day, some of the most important issues. 
For an example, uh, for the last six years, we've had deficits, uh, budget deficits, that have increased our debt by close to a trillion dollars a year. Well, the states could say to Obama and the Democrats who were doing this, that's enough. Uh, we're rescinding it with 30 countermands. You go back and write that congressional budget, and you go back and tell the president that we will not accept it as written, and you make sure that you don't throw a trillion dollars down our throat that our citizens have to pay. Now, what's that going to do to Congress? That's going to make Congress think twice before they push debt down our throat in a way that is not warranted. And so they'll have to present their case to the states in a way where they're saying, we believe this is in your best interest and work with us on this. That's a whole different attitude that they will have with the state legislatures. And then finally, Representative Damshin and uh, Senator Oli Lawson, I want you to keep in mind that uh, <clears throat> we have also uh, put in place a national strategy committee. It's primarily for the purpose of giving state legislators the method or the process whereby they can I define areas where their federal encroachment is un intolerable. Two, they can prioritize which one of the laws and regulatory rulings that they would like to see rescinded, and then they can decide that that's the particular law. It could be dozens of laws. That's the law we want rescinded because it's imposing on land grabs. It's a, it, there are a whole host of things that could be addressed. A, the Affordable Care Act, and so forth. And in that National Strategy Committee, the citizen initiatives will be the facilitator for the legislators. We have no authority. Article 5 gives us, as citizens, independent of the legislatures, no authority. But we want to help the legislators avoid lawsuits from Article 1, Section 10, which <coughs> prohibits interstate agreements without the consent of Congress. We simply don't want Congress in the affairs of any of this Article 5 business. So, one second, please. The point that we want to uh, emphasize is that the state legislatures will be deciding what needs to be addressed, and then citizen initiatives will uh, facilitate that decision and secure, try to secure the 30 countermands. We probably could secure some of these countermands in just a few weeks. <clears throat> we don't have to take a full 18 months. And the reason being is because they're hot issues that all the states are suffering with. In the area of energy, for an example, there are 38 states that are producing energy. Probably we can get ratification just from those states alone. So we have a lot of promise here. Now, Senator Lawson, would you please share with us any more that you want to talk about? Well, there was a, another issue that I put forward. Um, as you know, uh, we are unable as a nation to produce or make and build thorium reactors and that seems to be kind of an energy that is new and up, it's old and up and coming I guess. Uh, China currently is mining all of our rare minerals uh, for this uh, process. I think they're online for 30 reactors. I don't know if they're nuclear or uh, if they're a combination of nuclear or thorium but uh, I did put forth a resolution um, in this session to, along with other states who are putting forth these resolutions, to tell the government to open that up for us to try to use that technology. What I'd like to see it do is to be able to couple these thorium reactors with the current uh, energy plants we have with coal, let the coal develop into uh, uh, some kind of a fuel like they are doing in North Dakota, and then use these reactors as waste disposals to burn off all of the hazardous waste and the uh, waste that we're putting in Yucca Mountain and some of the other storage facilities for nuclear waste. What but a wonderful idea. The, what a wonderful idea. Once again, the feds are right in our face, blocking us every way we go. Well, let's think about the counterman regarding, uh, in regards to what you just said, or in reference to it, I guess is a better way to say it. You see, the laws that are in place, or the EPA rulings, or the BLM rulings, or the other agency rulings, that the, the, the DOJ and whoever, who have uh, put in action the, the, the laws that prevent the development of nuclear energy and the, any other kind of energy that the states want to produce, once the countermand amendment 
is is completed and 30 states have uh, uh, countermanded the federal government and that for that law it's rescinded now that industry is ready to go there's nothing holding it back anymore yeah exactly and so now you have the ability of getting the private business uh, getting private businesses to to consider opportunities that they have they don't have to look overseas anymore to, to find ways to use nuclear energy they don't have to look at uh, foreign nations to drill offshore. I mean, there's a whole host of applications that are almost infinite numbers where this countermand amendment could set the record straight and say to the federal government, we're not interested in your ideology. We have ways to protect our environment. We know how to protect our environment and we will protect our environment for our citizens. But we're not going to make allow you to come in and demand of us uh, uh, actions that are going to deprive us of our state's rights. At any rate, the counterman amendment fits those areas that you're very much concerned about. Any other comment, uh, Representative Damption, that you would like to share? Well, I think uh, I'd just like to say that I, I'm really thankful for the work you're doing on this counterman amendment process. and. Uh, we're, we're working at I in North Dakota here to try to get the resolutions properly worded and drawn up and, and get the text of the document <coughs> and then put it in the, in the uh, delegate resolution. And, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of going back to before the 17th Amendment. We had a little more say from our states, I think, when we appointed our senators. And uh, this is just going to empower the states. I think what the what the original intent of our forefathers was. It does indeed, sir, and I and I appreciate your uh, your clarification and also your interest in the work we're doing in North Dakota. I, uh, for the sake of our audience, I would like to share this. Uh, starting on the third of February, I will be traveling to North Dakota, and I will be on the road and will be meeting with the legislators up there. Uh, we are going to be going to South Dakota. We'll be going to 35 states over three months. I will be literally living on the road. And uh, the purpose for that is to help the legislatures understand the importance of the countermand amendment as to uh, how it will help them restore states' rights. And uh, I think that uh, for those of you who are in any of the states, you can find the schedule on our website. That is my travel itiner itinerary. On the website, and you will uh, you have an opportunity to uh, let me know how you can help us in your states. We will also have book signings, and uh, my new book is the Countermand Amendment: uh, The Missing Piece in the Article Five Puzzle. And uh, we will have opportunities for people to purchase the, one of those books. I believe the price will be twenty dollars, <coughs> and I will have I will uh, provide a personal autograph for you at these book signings. We'll have that schedule presented also on the website. So uh, we're moving fast, folks. We're not playing around with this counterman amendment. The state legislators are working with us. We've got states already that are filing. Uh, we have some that are still asking for clarifications, and we're working with them on that. But what I'm impressed with is that their legal people in these many states are saying to us, we like what you're doing, and show us how we should write this or do that or add this or take this out. And they're consulting with us as partners rather than looking at us as some kind of adversaries to uh, what they want to do in their state. So I'm, I'm encouraged by that. I think that we can get this thing ratified by the, maybe the third or the fourth quarter in 2016. If we can, then the state legislatures will be able to start the countermand initiatives for specific laws and rulings that need to be rescinded uh, by the end of 2016. And so there's a lot of hope now that we can restore our constitutional republic through this simple vehicle, which is the countermand amendment. Go to countermands.us, learn what we're doing. If you want a copy of the amendment, there's a link at the top. It says countermands. Click it and make a copy. Uh, you also have uh, a drop-down screen that will tell you, uh, show you what the delegate resolution is and what we propose to the states uh, for uh, as a template for them to follow. And then also, uh, you will be able to click the Delegate Resolution button, which will give you an opportunity to uh, uh, see how we bind the delegates who go to the convention so that the convention is not 
an unruly uh, mob of 534 or 35 politically charged delegates from the different states, but it's organized in a way whereby 26 states make sure that it's a Republican form of convention, which was the biggest issue at the Constitutional Convention even before the deliberation started. That had to be settled. They didn't have an automatic vote in the Constitutional Convention that everybody had one vote, they, every state. They wanted, the bigger states wanted the voting by population, and the little states said, wait a minute, we want one vote. Well, finally, the one vote rule was uh, adopted, and it became a, a Republican convention, the Constitutional Convention. That's got to be maintained in every Article 5 group. Now, Sandy, did you want to share something? Yes, I wanted to add something I heard on the news about Obamacare. That they have re-rated um, the costs, and the costs are going up so fast that they anticipate trillions of dollars of added debt over the next 10 years. Trillions. This law could bankrupt this country. And the counterman could counterman that and rescind all of those things they, they did, they, they spent so much time to develop uh, and, and to get uh, uh, passed unconstitutionally. This counterman amendment can say to the government, that's enough. You're just not going to do this anymore. You're not going to impose that kind of debt and you're not going to steal the liberties that the people have to do what they want regarding their health insurance and so forth. Uh, that's a good point, Cindy. Do you have anything else? No, exactly. But we're so concerned about a balanced budget amendment, but I think we need to get Obamacare repealed first so that maybe we could start cutting the costs. Yes, I agree. Uh, now, uh, Folks, uh, that's Sandy uh, Toth, our executive coordinator out of Georgia, and uh, folk, she's been with me now for over four years, I think. We've been working as partners in this project, and I can't say enough for her. She's sitting in a wheelchair, and she does it uh, with a lot of pain much of the time, and uh, the prognosis has been from time to time that she may not live very much longer. But she is so concerned about the next generation, and she's so concerned about the state legislatures understanding the sovereign authority they have in Article 5 and how they are the deliberative body, not the delegates who are sent to the convention, that she is forcing herself to participate in, in helping us move this thing forward and contributing in a way she's a, her, a constitutional scholar on her own. Uh, so uh, we really do look to her. Now, uh, Senator Larson and uh, uh, Representative Damshin, we have about two minutes left before we go to the top of the hour break. Would you take a minute apiece, starting with Senator Lawson, and we'll allow you to close this uh, session uh, together. Well, once again, I'm glad that our uh, folks like you that are putting this together and keeping us informed and really being a resource for us of information to be able to move this forward in a positive way. It really takes a lot of the boogeyman out of it when we can get some good information and easy information to uh, get to the people out here in North Dakota. We do have a lot of information on the counterman this session, and I think that uh, we're going to be very successful with it. We've already had one speaker out talking to the whole uh, Republican caucus, as well as anybody else who was uh, interested in hearing it, and it literally filled the room. So uh, it's got good movement up here. Excellent. I, I pre and I'm looking forward to meeting with you fellows in, in early February. Uh, Representative Damshin, why don't you take a half a minute or so and share what you want. Yes, well, first of all, I want to say a word of appreciation and thanks to Sandy for such dedication to, to an effort like this. And, and as well to you, Charles, I think, uh, I think we've got a good chance of moving this forward in North Dakota. We've got a, a good uh, bunch of conservative legislators and uh, with your help and and uh, God's help, I think, we can, I think we can do it. I think you're right, sir. I think we will do it. It may not be this session. It'll probably be in 2016. But we can win this battle. Uh, folks, we're going to have to go to the, the break at the top of the hour to, to hear from our CPR sponsors and also for station identification. Stay with us, please. And we'll be back. We have some very, very challenging things to talk about in the second hour. 
uh, Representative Damshin and Senator Oli Lawson, thank you so much for being our guests tonight. It was a delight having you participate with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Katy Perry is coming to town. Can we get tickets, please? Tickets? Sure. How many? Well, there's Hannah and Maddie and Jen and Sarah and Sarah. Whoa, hold on. Here it comes. We can't forget about your older sister. <gasps> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Seriously? What? I get two times the thank you points on each ticket. <sighs> Can I come? Yeah. The City Thank You Preferred card. Now earn two times the points on entertainment and dining out with no annual fee. To apply, go to city.com slash thank you cards. The most amazing thing about the Ford Fusion isn't the way it looks. The most amazing thing is the way it sees. With blind spot technology, a lane keeping system, and a standard rear view camera, the Fusion is ready for whatever comes your way. Go prepared. Go further. However dark the night, however dim our hopes, the light is always there within you. His family gave him hope. You fight harder than those other guys, and you win. His spirit gave him strength. We're gonna die out here. We're not dying! And in his darkest hour... Who is the Olympic athlete? His faith <clears throat> would not be broken. Hello, mother and father. This will be the first time in two years that you'll have heard my voice. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Your loving son, Louis. On Christmas Day, experience the unbelievable true story of one man's journey home. You can take it. You can make it. Just gotta believe you can. If I can take it, I can make it. Unbroken. Rated PG-13. Christmas Day. The moment you connect, you're no longer in control. What does this guy want? No claim, no statement. We're facing a nuclear meltdown. This is only the beginning. Black Hat, rated R. Read something recently worth thinking about. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who's given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, who's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier who serves under the flag who defends the protesters' right to burn the flag. Isn't it time now to demonstrate that we support our troops? Were it not for the brave, there'd be no land of the free. Fred Thompson's message was brought to you by CitizensUnited.org. Welcome back, folks. This is the State Legislative Roundtable, and we are grateful to you for uh, staying with us and uh, taking part in our first hour uh, with uh, Representative Chuck uh, Damshin as well as Senator Oli Lawson from North Dakota. And we are looking forward to some good meetings with them on, on the 4th and the 5th. I will be in North Dakota uh, meeting with their legislators. We will also be traveling throughout the states. You'll be uh, able to see the itinerary on countermands.us and the states that I'll be in, the dates and book signings that we will be uh, having in the different state capitals. So stay close to us, folks, because we're moving. And uh, you might be a help to us in a big way in the state that you're in as we are traveling through. Now, uh, tonight, we, uh, the second hour, we have some issues that I would like to address. And uh, also, I'd like for Mike Coons to be talking a little bit more about some of the problems we had up there in Alaska recently with the Anwar grab by the federal government. But uh, I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, the World Health Organization's report that identifies the countries in a way where they are presenting the murders that take place per 100,000. I'm going to go through this list, <coughs> and then we're going to show you why this is such an important report. 
from the World Health Organization the latest murder statistics for the world. Murders per 100,000 citizens per year. Honduras, 91.6 murders per 100,000 in that little country of Honduras. Wow. El Salvador, 69.2. Jamaica, 52.2. Venezuela, that's that Marxist communist nation, remember? That moved away from free markets and went in the direction of Marxism. 45.1 murders per 100,000. Uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, which is uh, a territory of, of, of the United States, but not under the federal control, 39.2. Guatemala has 38. Congo, 30.8. I am passing many uh, countries off, by the way, uh, and I'm just going down to come to the bottom line. Ethiopia, 22.5 murders per 100,000. Uh, the Dominic uh, Dominica. 22.1. Burundi, 22.1. Uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, <coughs> 21.7. Panama, 21.6. Brazil, 21. Equatorial Guinea, 20.7. Kenya, 20.1. Oh my. Uh, let me see if I can skip down a bit so I don't read them all because there's 90 some countries listed here. North Korea, 15.2. Sierra Leone, 14.9. We drop all the way down to <coughs> Granada, 11.5. <coughs> Paraguay, 11.5. Bolivia, 8.9 murders per 100,000 population. Mozambique, 8.8. .8. Kazakhstan, 8.8. .8. Mongolia, 8.7. Cayman Islands, 8.4. Pakistan, 7.8. Laos, 4.6. Georgia, 4.3. And the United States, 4.2. Now, why is that so important? Every one of these 92 countries, no, excuse me, 109 countries, prevent their citizens from owning guns. Every one. But the United States still has the Second Amendment. And we still have the right to bear arms. And our murder per 100,000, even with all the confusion and chaos that <laughs> takes place in this nation, we're down to 4.2. 4.2 murders per 100,000 versus the top country, which I read earlier is Honduras, 91.6. But even more telling is Switzerland is so low that they don't even have them on the chart. It's way under 4.1. It's almost zero. Why? Every single person in Switzerland is required to own a gun. But they're also required to learn how, through special uh, training that they get, uh, how to use it. And they are almost not even on the graph that the World Health Organization put together in determining the number of murders per 100,000. Folks on this panel, what do you think of those statistics? Well, from the, the when you started going off, you initially started off with Honduras, and you started going into the different Central American jun juntas, which are another word of dictatorship, and what's the, historically, what's the number one Thing that dictators take away from their people. Healthcare, number two, is firearms. So it doesn't surprise me. You got Venezuela, like you said, Marxist, communist, um, right on down. You got, then you got you know the, those places in Africa that you're talking about, pure on, full on dictatorships. But what I got, when you kind of kept them going on there, first, it got me kind of wondering uh, what are they, are they considering those murders? Are, are those murderers, as in, you know, somebody breaks into my house, you know, a criminal to, and kills me? Or is that dictatorship soldiers coming into my house and killing me? Or is that terrorists in Ethiopia killing people? So that's kind of interesting from that standpoint because... I believe they, that they are defining murder as 
the uh, taking of another person's life unlawfully at the hands of a weapon or in some other way. So a, 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 terror, a terrorist killing somebody with a uh, that, would with that would not qualify. That would not. That would not qualify. But still, would still fall under that. <laughs> yes. Well, the fact is that if it's a if it's a, 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 a an Islamic uh, uh, junta of some kind or, or a military junta, uh, that isn't what we're talking about here. We're talking about people in their general population who are murdered every year and then, uh, by and some we, other citizen. And then we're talking about the Swiss. The Swiss are every person, every adult in Switzerland is a member of the Swiss militia, the Swiss military, and they all have fully automatic firearms. So, and the, the, uh, the armed society is a polite society. Well, and that's the point that I'm trying to present to the audience. The fact is that a healthy democratic system will stay healthy and will have less murder in its uh, population if it has the legal right to bear arms than nations that have had the legal right taken away from them. All of those nations, 109 of them, will not allow their citizens to have to bear arms. And so it's illegal to bear arms in those nations. You know, the liberal, the liberal argument is, uh, you know, take away the guns and uh, you're going to drop, the crime rate's going to drop. Well, these statistics from the World Health Organization prove that these liberals and these progressives are nuts. And so you folks out there in the audience who are uh, NRA members, uh, National Riflemen Association members, uh, or uh, other uh, uh, Second Amendment uh, defenders, keep in mind that the Counterman Amendment will allow you, through state legislatures, to rescind those burdensome laws by the federal government that prevent you from effectively using your firearm in the, your state or any state for that matter. Uh, also penalties like <coughs> the Armed Career Criminal Act which impose on uh, felons uh, penalties that are incredibly unconstitutional and and uh, uh, incredibly uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now but the idea is un the punishment is unconstitutional uh, cruel and unusual that's the term I'm thinking of the fact is that now with the counterman amendment those even those criminal acts those criminal laws can be rescinded forcing the federal government to prevent uh, the application of punishment uh, in an unjust way. But uh, I know an individual who had never committed the crime but got 15 years in prison because he just happened to be a felon and he possessed a gun to defend himself. He had been robbed three times with his business and he reported it to the police and the police came out and saw the gun. They said, you're a felon, you can't have it, uh, you're going to prison. He's in prison now. He was given 15 years. Never committed a crime. You see, the counterman amendment can address that issue. And it can restore to the states the right to define what those punishments need to be. So that the federal government can't impose its will on the states because of the Commerce Clause. These are the kind of things that the counterman can do. It can defend our First Amendment rights. It can defend our Fourth Amendment rights. The counterman amendment will enable the states to uh, identify and uh, define and enumerate states' rights and citizen rights uh, so that they are permanent. Nullification can't do that. But the counterman, through state legislatures and with 30 countermands on a particular law or ruling, will actually enumerate a particular unenumerated right that the states can then say you can't go any further on this federal government because now uh, we have countermanded it. So uh, this is a powerful, powerful vehicle for those of you out there who are Second Amendment advocates. Come and join us. Uh, come uh, to our website, countermands.us. Tell us how you can help us. You can click the 
uh, join us button, tell us the areas of interest you have and how you might be able to assist us. If you want to order an autographed copy of my new book, Counterman Amendment, the missing piece in the Article 5 puzzle, you can click the uh, book cover that is on the, on the uh, entry page and uh, at countermans.us and it'll take you to an order form. Uh, you'll enter in their autographed copy and we'll send it to you. It's $20 plus $5 for shipping. That'll help us with our expenses. Or if you just want to sponsor books that will be sent to state legislators around the country, well, you can do the same. Click that button and you enter sponsor. And uh, the instructions are on the website so you don't need to take them down right now. But the fact is we will ship a book that you sponsored for $25, 20 plus packaging and, and shipping for $5. And we will ship it to a state legislator in your state. If all of the legislators have already received a copy in your state, we will ship it to another state and begin to uh, reach those 7,500 legislators around the country. On the other hand, you may just want to make a donation. And that donation button is up on the, well, you can do it in either button, but just put in their donation when you click it and just send your money on to us. It'll help us in many, many different ways. And we would be grateful to you for that. So we've got a lot going for us now. Now, uh, I'm going to go into uh, a discussion that we had last Friday dealing with the Convention of States. But before I do, uh, I want to give uh, Sandy a chance to share what's on her mind, and then Mike, and then Kelly, if you'd like to share something, we'll bring you in too. You want me to talk about the Convention of States? No, ma'am. Uh, I'm going to do that, but I just thought maybe if you had something else you wanted to add, you should feel free to do so right now. Oh, okay. Um, I have talked to Charles quite a bit about losing our rights, and this is something a lot of people don't even consider, but how about a right to work? And it goes along with the right to have property to go earn it. But the government has literally been killing jobs and forcing people onto a welfare system. <coughs> Think about what Obamacare has done with the 30-hour work week. I mean, this law has done so much damage to our country, it's incredible. But that 30-hour full-time work week has caused a lot of employers to either let their employees go or to cut their hours and I know because I've run into people at different stores the guys are out there helping carry your packages out and everything and they're going I can't I don't know what I'm gonna do my hours have been cut and I can't live on what they're giving me you know in hours and it was just as you know Obamacare was starting to kick in and I felt so bad because here's a hard-working guy he was getting 34 hours a week and now he was cut back to 28 and that six hours even at minimum wage which I think he was getting a little bit more is a lot when you're depending on it to pay your bills and survive then think about all the people in the energy industry in coal and when the gentleman from North Dakota we're talking about I know in Georgia we've shut down a couple of coal-fired plants and now they're building expensive nuclear reactors to replace them to the tune of about 14 billion dollars. Now of course the state's got to come up with the money and eventually it winds up in our power bills. So our rights are being affected in ways we normally do not think of we think of rights of speech or of religion but we don't think of the fact that people have a right to work and to believe that the federal government is not going to take away those rights or do something to hurt them and I think that is a very critical issue for people to think about and start calling their legislators in their states and asking them to support the countermand because we need to get rid of some of these laws that have been imposed upon us. 
I think that's a, a good explanation of how the Counterman Amendment will benefit the citizenry as well as the states uh, in the area of energy and nuclear and coal and so forth. But keep in mind, folks, that we there are 38 energy producing states. There may be more than that. Uh, but the fact is, we can identify 38. We need 34 state applications, and then we need 38 state ratifications. I personally believe that we will actually get these ratifications on the counter amendment uh, just by the energy states alone. And there are other states that have other reasons to join us. There are some out there that are pro-life states, many of them as a matter of fact, I think there are at least 30 of them that are strongly pro-life. They'll come with us. How about the healthcare industry states that are dependent on uh, the healthcare industry that's being torn apart? Uh, they'll come with us. You see, what we have is a, a tool that will allow the states to exercise uh, a constitutional right that will in fact trump all federal laws and regulations. Even the Supreme Court, if it's going to decide another case like Roe versus Wade that cost 50 million lives already, will think twice. Because if they overstep their boundary, that decision that they made can be countermanded. Did you know that uh, the Supreme Court's ruling in the Affordable Care Act and uh, Justice Roberts' decision, who declared that the method by which to fund the Affordable Care Act uh, was a tax, he should have never declared that. He should have said, it, it may be a tax, but you have to define it, Congress, and send it back to Congress, because he was the deciding vote. But did you know that that one decision by Roberts can be countermanded? What would that do to Obamacare? See how powerful this is? Now it does take 30 states. So it's not a matter of an oligarchy of states telling the federal government how to behave. It's simply saying to the federal government, look, you need to behave in a way that is in our interest as well as yours, and you will find that we will work with you. But if you keep throwing these things down our throat, we are going to countermand them and rescind them. It's going to make the federal government a good partner in government. And uh, this is a powerful tool, folks. You need to come and join us. You need to help us. Now, before I get to uh, Mike, he has a few things to share dealing with gun rights and some laws that can be addressed with the counterman. I want to just uh, bring your attention to two shows on CPRWorldWideMedia.com. One is the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Show uh, with the two hosts, uh, V. Wright and Jose Estevez. They have a powerful penetrating talk show that focuses on <coughs> the bringing to you the news that the media won't talk about with hard-hitting facts and events that will help you to see who we really are as Americans, where we came from, and where we are going. They are constitutionalists who work tirelessly to preserve our constitutional heritage, states' rights, and personal freedoms. Their show is weekly on uh, Monday through Thursdays at 7 to 9 p.m. And the second show I'd like to uh, suggest you listen to when you have opportunity is the Right Side Patriot Show with Craig Andreessen and Diane Sori. These are two exceptional <laughs> investigative reporters and journalists and they dig things out of, uh, the, I, I don't even know where they get some of this stuff. They had shared with us one time how they had dug information up about inner workings in Israel and how the, the, the intrigue that's going on in the Middle East that was affected. I was just amazed. Listen to them. They're on at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays and 11 a.m. on Saturdays. The Right Side Patriot Show. Now, having said that, uh, keep in mind that I will be traveling. I'll be on the road for three months. I will be visiting 35 state legislatures. I want to speak to as many legislators as I can. Some of them have requested that I be there. And we are going to work with the legislators as best we can to help them get this counterman filing in their state completely. Alaska is doing it. North Dakota is doing it. Louisiana is going in that direction. Utah has already filed. Uh, and we have other states that are moving in the right direction with us. So uh, if you can help us, uh, look at the schedule. It will be on the website soon. 
and then see the dates that we will be in your state capital and contact us, let us know that you'd like to come, especially to the book signings. We're going to have a special counterman amendment seminar in state capitals and we will be uh, providing questions and answers. I, I should say we will be providing answers to your questions at these special meetings. And then we will also have an autographed book signing. Now, Mike, uh, I know that you have something you wanted to share. I would like you to feel free to, you've, you've got about four minutes right now, so if you would come in and, and share what you, you have on your mind. Well, yeah, I may probably have to uh, finish it up with it at the bottom of the hour as well. Um, the I'll, I'll just want to go ahead and read a simple uh, potential uh, uh, counterman uh, resolution that could be used by 30 states. You understand that there are 40 states that got concealed carry uh, and five, four states now that have constitutional carry and this would very easily go through. Whereas the federal, gov federal government passage of the 1968 Gun Control Act um, has violated the state's individual Second Amendment rights by regulating this enumerated right. Whereas the history of enforcement of the 1968 Gun Control Act by the U.S. Attorney Generals in conjunction with local state law enforcement has not been enforced consistently, be it resolved that under Article 28, Countermand Amendment, the state of Alaska nullifies and repeals the 1968 Gun Control Act, all changes to GSGCA, and all rules and regulations re related thereof. Be it further resolved that other states take up this resolution to protect their citizens' Second Amendment rights and to thus upon the 30th state resolution that the 1968 GCA is hereby repealed. That simple, folks. And you got you got Arizona, you got Idaho, you got Montana, you got Washington, uh, Wyoming, you got Alaska, you got the southern states, you got the Midwest, some of the the Midwest states, West Mississippi, um, that are states that understand the value of the Second Amendment and the value of the armed citizen and the value of your inalienable God-given right to defend yourself against a tyrannical government, which is the main reason for the Second Amendment. Remember, they just whooped uh, King George with, uh, with, with uh, in, in doing so. So this is something that can be done. You can do the same thing with the 1934 National Firearms Act. You can do the same thing with Brady. You could do the same thing with a lot of gun laws that are violating our inalienable right to keep and bear arms and to protect ourselves and our families. Understand, the gun issue is not about hunting. It's not about gun collecting. It's not about trap shooting. This is about protecting our sovereignty as sovereigns and as individuals and our families and against a tyrannical government. And that's the purpose, and that's why the founders put the Second Amendment in. And then I'll talk about nullification at the top, at the other side of the hour, because okay. there was a really good conversation on that. Uh, we have one minute till break, but what I'm going to do is just remind the audience to stay with us. You are listening to the State Legislative Roundtable. We can be heard on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, live, both days. We also have at least four uh, recasts that uh, occur during the week and so uh, our audience right now has grown to well over a million uh, people. We would like you to let others know about our program. Go to cprworldwidemedia.com forward slash live dash radio dot com. Uh, excuse me, live dash radio period. And also go to countermans.us. Order a copy of my new book, Countermans Amend Counterman Amendment, The Missing Piece in the Article 5 Puzzle. We will send a, an autographed copy out to you uh, as quickly as we can get them off the shelf. And we thank you very much for participating in this program tonight. Stay with us. We still have more to come. And we have to uh, go to break and listen uh, to a message from our CFR sponsors as well as station identification. 
Well, looky here, a new listener. Hey, this ain't your little sister's radio station. City Gold is an account from a global bank with over 200 years experience, offering international banking expertise across over 100 markets. Your dedicated investment consultant adds a unique personal touch to your banking experience. Complimentary lifestyle offers like Marhaba service and free free global money transfers help you save on time and money. At the core of City Gold is your dedicated relationship manager personally looking after your financial needs. Be it lifestyle privileges like golf, lounge access across the Middle East or worldwide privileges, City Gold provides you with a rewarding experience. One card is all you need for all your Citibank accounts. As a City Gold client, you benefit from our international expertise and global reach. City Gold is more than account. It's a personal banking service offering exceptional privileges, customer service and recognition worldwide. So wherever you are, City Gold will be with you. It's not about how many miles you can get out of the C-Max Hybrid. It's about how much life you can fit into it. The Ford C-Max Hybrid, with an EPA estimated range of 540 miles on a tank of gas, and all the room you need to enjoy the trip. Go stretch out. Go further. However dark the night, however dim our hopes, the light is always there within you. His family gave him hope. You fight harder than those other guys, and you win. His spirit gave him strength. We're gonna die out here. We're not dying! And in his darkest hour... Who is the Olympic athlete? His faith <clears throat> would not be broken. Hello, mother and father. This will be the first time in two years that you'll have heard my voice. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Your loving son, Louis. On Christmas Day, experience the unbelievable true story of one man's journey home. You can take it. You can make it. Just gotta believe you can. If I can take it, I can make it. Unbroken. Rated PG-13. Christmas Day. The moment you connect, you're no longer in control. What does this guy want? No claim, no statement. Facing a nuclear meltdown. This is only the beginning. The Black Hat Radar. Read something recently worth thinking about. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who's given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, who's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier who serves under the flag who defends the protesters' right to burn the flag. Isn't it time now to demonstrate that we support our troops? Were it not for the brave, there'd be no land of the free. Fred Thompson's message was brought to you by CitizensUnited.org. Welcome back, folks, to the State Legislators' Roundtable. This is Charles Kaprowitz, Executive Director for Citizen Initiatives and the Counterman Amendment. We've had a very lively discussion tonight, both in the first hour and in the last half hour. I want you to remember that this program is designed to not just be a rant or a rave that is for the purpose of uh, finding fault or complaining or just saying how bad things are. We've got a solution, folks, and the solution is the counterman amendment. And with it, we can address almost any subject dealing with state uh, federal encroachment on state rights and federal encroachment on civil liberties. Uh, they can include taxation, criminal law, energy policies, health care, social issues, federal land grabs, court decisions, education, executive orders, social issues, unfunded liabilities, EPA, BLM, IRS, and many, many more. And you'll also learn how to identify your unenumerated rights in the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, and instead of just nullifying them, you will learn how to enumerate them 
so that they become codified in the Constitution and as a result the federal government cannot uh, uh, deny those rights to you in the future. It's not just nullification and we're going to hear more about that from Mike Coons in just a few moments. So go to countermands.us, order a copy of my new book, Countermands, Counterman Amendment, The Missing Piece in the Article 5 Puzzle. Also uh, <clears throat> look at the itinerary that we have for uh, visiting the state capitals over the next three months. I will be uh, visiting <coughs> the capital, speaking to the legislators, some of whom have already invited us. And I also will be conducting uh, uh, book seminars or counterman amendment seminars at, t at which uh, times you will be able to make comments and ask questions. I'll attempt to address them and answer them. And at the same time, you also will be able to get a signed copy of my book Counterman Amendment, the missing piece in the Article 5 puzzle. So, uh, Mike Coons, our National Director, why don't you step in now and just continue with what you were uh, saying at the bottom of the last half hour. Thank you, Charles. I had a conversation with a person the other day, and they were very much into nullification. They're, they're they were listening to people from the Tenth Amendment, Tenth Amendment Task Force, and others that to believe that we can get rid of all our ills through nullification. Let me use this as let me use this analogy since we've been talking about firearms and Second Amendment right a little bit. Let's say that I am a gun dealer. I have a uh, my Coons gun store. And I'm up here in Alaska, and the state of Alaska uh, legislature gets fed up with uh, the 1968 Gun Control Act and some of these other federal laws that are, in, are impeding our, our abilities to uh, in, enjoy our, our liberties. And they nullify the 1968 Gun Control Act. Now the 1968 Gun Control Act is the, is the is the one that started the whole process of when you go in and buy a firearm, you have to fill out a federal form, with your name and your information. You have to answer I think it's like 12 or so many questions. You're not a felon. You're not a an illegal alien. You're not a person that's been dishonorably discharged. Uh, you're not a uh, um, you haven't been uh, arrested for domestic violence, even though that's a misdemeanor, not a felony. So they turn around and they nullify that. And so I got my store and a gentleman comes in and says, I want that Ruger All-American 30-06 that you got. And I say, okay, sir, that's going to be $400. And he gives me the $400, and I wrap up the firearm, put it in the box, and we talk about the firearm a little bit, and, and he walks out the door. And a few minutes later, or an hour later, or two hours later, here comes that same gentleman back with a coat on that says, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, with about four or five of his buddies. You're under arrest, sir. Why? You are in violation of the 1968 Gun Control Act. You sold a firearm without fill, filling out, without that having that individual fill out that form and going through through a federal background check. But the state of Alaska has nullified that. No, sir. We don't recognize that we're the federal government. That is a state nullification, and that the law is still on the books. You're under arrest. Now, it just turns out that they find out that in, during my receipts that I've sold uh, 10 firearms or 100 firearms since nullification without filling out, without having people do the forms, without informing the federal government as I was supposed to as a fi federal firearms licensed dealer. So now I'm looking at five years federal time for every firearm sold. Think the state of Alaska is going to get me out of federal out of federal jail because they nullified it? Not. Not going to happen. Oh, the state the state of Alaska is going to be mad and they're going to they're going to they're you're going to yell and scream and holler and kick and scream 
And you know, I may have, I may, you know, I may ha call up Wayne Anthony Ross, our number one Second Amendment lawyer in the state of Alaska, and he's going to go uh, plea bargain if he can. So, that's nullification, because nullification, all it does is, is the state is it's basically civil disobedience at the state level in a lot of ways. That's all it is. The law is still there. It doesn't go away. The law is still there. So those people that are that are doing things, they think they're doing things right because that's what the state says they can do. Well, the federal law says different. Now, here's the difference between nullification and the counterman. The counterman, I take it to my state legislatures that I would like to get rid of the 1968 Gun Control Act and why? And a bunch of us for the, from the state of Alaska do the same thing. And our state legislatures make a resolution, like I just read at the bottom, just before the bottom of the hour, to repeal the 1968 Gun Control Act. And Idaho and, and Montana and Arizona and 30 other states, or 29 other states, or more, because remember there's uh, about 40 states that got concealed carry, so they're, they're right in there. All we need is 30. And then once that 30th threshold is is met with that same resolution, each state, then then that 1968 Gun Control Act is repealed. Now, take this to the next step on the Counterman Amendment, which we haven't talked about tonight a little bit. So that is now repealed. And I still have my gun store. And I had this gentleman comes in and says, I want to buy that Ruger All-American 30-06. And I said, okay, sir, that's going to cost you $400. He plops down his money, he takes his rifle, and he, takes all, he walks out. Hour later, he comes back in with his BATF buddies and says, you're under arrest. For what? Well, you're in violation of the 68 Gun Control Act. You're in violation of BATF rules and regulations, and, and you violated your federal firearms license. Oh really? Uh huh. Hold on a hold that thought for a second. I pick up the phone. I call nine one one. Uh, give me a state trooper down here. Why? Oh, I get. I'm uh, being arrested by BATF in violation of uh, Article twenty eight of the U.S. Constitution called the Counterman because they in the Counterman Amendment it says any individual or organization who intentionally violates this article is subject to five years in prison. And if the federal government doesn't do anything within 90 days, the states can. So the state troopers come down, they put these five miscreant BATF agents in handcuffs, take them down before a state of Alaska judge and a state <coughs> of Alaska jury. And the state of Alaska jury says guilty and they go down to Spring Creek Maximum Security Prison down at Seward, Alaska, and they can uh, have herself a good time in general population with maybe some of those good old boys that they threw in, in, threw in prison over the years. That's the difference between the Tenth Amendment Task Force and nullification and the Countermand Amendment. It, it is, and, that's a, and you can't get it any plainer than that. So I hope that kind of helps. Excellent, Mike. That's really wonderful news. And uh, I, I think that the audience got your message. It really is a powerful way to allow the states to protect their civil liberties and the legislatures to protect their states' rights. And to have the enforcement provision makes them a powerful entity in uh, making certain that intentional violators, whether they be the uh, Senator Reid or, or whether they be the president or some official in an EPA or a private organization that is trying to put uh, problems in in, uh, uh, in the way of the states exercising their amendment rights in the, the counter amendment, amendment uh, they can be prosecuted. I like I, That was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Now listen, uh, I would like to ask Sandy, did you have something else you wanted to add? The, Sandy is on our panel tonight. Sandy Toth is our executive coordinator. <coughs> Well, one of the things that, in talking about guns, because 
it kind of brought it up about Operation Choke Point that a lot of people don't know about. And that's Eric Holder's Justice Department leaning on banks so they will not give accounts to pawn shops, gun shops, certain businesses. In other words, you want to give this pawn shop that carries guns a bank account where they can process their credit cards and everything, well, you just may be subject to an audit in the near future. And that's what our wonderful Justice Department has been doing. Trying to, if they can't make a law to take away the guns, then they're going to go in through the back door and try a different way. But when I heard about this, I'm going, you know, <laughs> I'm in a wheelchair. What do I need with a gun, you know? But the thing is that it makes me want to go out and buy one just for spite. I had, um, <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd think that was funny, Charles. I'm the same way, Sandy. And don't a woman in a wheelchair with a gun. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm the same way, Sandy. Hey, you know, I have my little BB gun that I shoot at the squirrels with. Please. Um, anyway, the thing is that I looked at this Operation Choke Point, and I'm going, here comes the Justice Department, supposed to uphold the law, and they're going into the banks and saying, you drop. And they have... You can search out online. If you want to find out more details about it, if you search, you Google Operation Choke Point, you'll find plenty of material about it. And business owners who have testified, they have lost their bank accounts. And without that, they couldn't process a credit card. And they had to keep searching around. And, yeah, and Fox News has done a, a good piece on it as well. Yeah, they just recently did. But, you know... I haven't talked about it before then I found out. But anyway, um, search around and you will find plenty of information about our very honorable Justice Department. Excellent, uh, excellent insight. Thank you, Sandy. Now, we're going to have Kelly come on in a moment, but I want to remind the audience that this coming Friday is a very, very special program. And I'm going to read you a little paragraph that will promote, for the purpose of promoting this event. We started this last Friday, and we will be continuing it this Friday. And it, it's th simply this. The Convention of States, as an organization, is an ally of citizen initiatives and the Counterman Amendment, but they are not partners. <coughs> there are specific reasons why they're not. On this Friday night, <coughs> you will learn why the COS Article 5 call for a convention is inadequate to protect state legislature sovereignty and why a COS convention will likely result in mayhem. The states risk losing too much to gamble on the COS convention. Don't miss this special report this coming Friday evening on the 30th at 8 p.m. at the same station you're on now, cprworldwidemedia.com forward slash live dash radio. This is going to be a, a revelation for many of you COS supporters. You need to be attending this uh, special report on Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern. Okay, Kelly, why don't you uh, share with us what's on your mind? Well, Sandy doesn't want to get me started on Mr. Eric Holder. That is just typical thug tactics. That's Eric Holder. He's a thug. You're talk he's always trying to control the people. I saw a YouTube video where he says, well, we've got to brainwash people into thinking differently about guns. And you're talking about Operation Choke Point. Uh, one of, I won't get into it tonight, but there's another one called Operation PatCon, and that's Patriot Conspiracy. And that's been going on for a very long time. Uh, it's anti-patriot, anti-Christian, anti-militia, anti-American, okay? These are false flags set up by our federal government, Eric Holder. You know, he's been connected to 
Ruby Ridge, Waco, uh, Oklahoma City bombing, and of course we can't forget Fast and Furious. Brian Terry, one of our border patrolmen, lost his lives, lost his life, and many others on both sides of the border have lost their lives because of the gun running. He's he's a he's a thug, but like I said, don't get me started on that guy. What I did want to talk about is uh, I want to urge our listening audience to learn this strategy. This is so important. Teach it to your kids. They're going to need this. If you want to rescue liberty, please learn this strategy. Direct your state legislators to adopt this countermand resolution now. We are running out of time. If they want to rescue liberty, defend and protect the Constitution, and uphold their oaths, then they're going to have to go around the U.S. Congress, the courts, and the executive branch if they're going to do it. We've got the Article 5 strategy. Our state legislatures need the power of the countermand now. With the countermand in place, they can learn how to undo all of the unconstitutional laws, rules and regulations, they can all be countermanded and rescinded, not just nullified, they're gone. If the federal government wants to try it, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and start all over. With the countermand, 30 states can countermand executive orders these crazy executive orders and they're they're called something else too what was it a presidential they got two names for them memorandum yeah presidential memorandum uh we can we can rescind these crazy court decisions how many states are upset about same-sex marriage what 80 percent of the population says no thank you but one federal judge says oh yeah yeah you're you're gonna marry somebody it, 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 we're just our morals and standards are just being driven into the ground. It can even handle the budget, the debt, and Obamacare. You know the states want Obamacare gone. Our social issues, especially Roe versus Wade. We had a gentleman on the show that said it was there was a 9/11 every day of unborn children that are being ripped from the womb in America. We are America. We are not a death culture. We can even get rid of the EPA rules and regulations, like Charles said, the BLM, IRS, oh, and the Department of Justice. That brings us right back to Mr. Eric Holder. And then another thing, too, the language is very important because the Article 5 is an amendment convention. It is not a constitutional convention. Okay, we're there to propose a new amendment, not a new constitution. So again, I just want to, the, the, we're running out of time. I'm, I'm feeling a little panicky right now. We need to learn the countermand strategy. We need to teach it to our kids because they're, I don't have enough life, I don't think, to clean this mess up. So they're going to need to know this strategy. If you want your American heritage to endure, Teach this to your kids. The federal government is supposed to be subject to the will of the states, not the other way around. The states created the federal government. Boy, I went off on a little rant there that time, didn't I? Good, good, Kelly. I was proud of you. Thank you. Folks, uh, Kelly had hit on really the, the very important aspects of the Countermand Amendment. It is a constitutional amendment under Article 5 that is being advanced through state legislatures, not through Congress. Congress would never approve this because the whole purpose of the Counterman Amendment is to control the federal government and to prevent it from taking away our liberties and states' rights. So uh, she has hit on extremely important aspects of this amendment, but and so is Mike for that matter, But and Sandy, I, had, I don't want to leave her out. But the, the point that I, I'm trying to drive us to is this. The Countermand Amendment does not change the Constitution. All of the inalienable rights that we are given by God and that have been codified in the Bill of Rights remain intact. Nothing changes. All of the uh, articles, the 
uh, uh, articles that establish the three branches of government and their functionality and how elected officials are to be elected and so forth. Uh, all of that stays intact. Nothing is going to change. The only thing that changes is that the states will have a tool with the Count Amend Amendment whereby they will be able to say to the federal government, <coughs> we now have the power to prevent you from stealing our constitutional rights. And we are countermanding a specific law or ruling so you do not deny our citizens that right and that, it, that uh, inalienable benefit that, uh, that was given to us both by God and also in this Constitution. So uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful way to protect the Constitution and yet to make certain that there's a backup power in the state legislatures, the collective will of 30 or more states will actually say to the federal government, you have no more uh, say in that particular area. And as Mike Coons had very uh, correctly stated before, it is not just nullification. When you count them in, they're going to nullify. They're going to say to the federal government, we will not abide by that ruling. <coughs> On the other hand, once 30 states come to the place where they <coughs> have countermanded, now you're saying it is no longer nullification, it is a rescission. And that law is no longer <coughs> on the books and can no longer be enforced. So this is a very important aspect of it. When we look at the Bundy Ranch deal, and I've heard this, I've said this analogy before, uh, it was only a miracle, by a miracle that there were no bullets flying over there. And the <coughs> BLM officials with their guns were drawn and they were ready to do what they had to do in order to enforce this tax uh, liability on the Bundy Ranch. And the fact is that the Bundy had, had performed an act of nullification, but it never prevented the BLM from doing the same thing all over again in the future. So they could go back into Nevada and say to Bundy, you know, I'm sorry, we want that $2 million for using federal land. And uh, Bundy would have to go through the nullification process all over again. And there would have to be more militia out there and more people <coughs> standing in his defense till eventually somebody's going to get killed. Maybe a lot of people. And the BLM people can come in, the Bureau of Land Management, they can come in every day if they wanted to, every week, every... There's no end to it as long as the law is still on the books. Now, we can do this peacefully with the countermand. That's exactly right. And that's, that's one of the real exciting aspects of it. We can actually countermand a form of nullification and rescind <coughs> or repeal any law and or regulation that is burdensome to the states when 60% of the states collectively agree it needs to be addressed. And we can rescind it and it no longer can be enforced on us. We need to protect our liberties, folks. Now, we're coming up on our two-minute warning. <coughs> we have the custom of closing with a short prayer. I, <coughs> many of you in the audience know that I am a Christian man. And I would like always to make certain that the Lord leads the way with this very, very important initiative. Remember, this coming Friday night, 8 p.m., we're going to be addressing COS, Convention of States, in a very, very forthright way. It's going to be a penetrating analysis. You COS people out there are going to have your hair standing up. Because what you've been sold as far as a bill of goods for COS is not what, quite what they are saying. And we are going to show why. It's not like they're bad guys. They are not. But they just don't have it together in understanding the power of uh, Article 5. <clears throat> Lord, we come in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that we have this privilege. Lord, <clears throat> we have discussed many things tonight, important aspects of our nation and states' rights. We had two guests from North Dakota. Now, Lord, we're looking to you to help us, even more than you have. Give us wisdom, give us direction, send us the people to support us, send us the finances that we need, give us the safety for our directors and their supporters and their family members, and God we pray that as a result of our effort, you will be pleased to give us victory so that we can see this nation one more time returning to a God-fearing people, and we will surely give you the praise we ask it through your son Jesus.